Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we'll take a look at how to deal with this error, the does not exist error. So I'm trying to go to slash item slash nine on my website. And basically I'm trying to get, as you can see right here, the item whose ID is nine. And there's no item with an ID of nine inside of the database. So this is going to cause an issue for us. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually handle this error so that instead of giving us this ugly page, it'll just give us our normal website and we can include a message that says that it's not a valid URL or rather a valid ID number. So uh, to do this, we're going to take the uh, part where we actually get the item and we're going to move it up here. Um, I'll call it ITM just so it doesn't uh, conflicts with the name item, not that it really matters, but so ITM is equal to whatever the item is that we have. And we're going to say item is equal to ITM right here. So this is basically the equivalent of what we had before, but we're going to change it slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, um, I think we just want to use a try and accept here. We don't want to use get or create. I should point that out. There is a method called get or create that will either get the object based on the ID number, um, or I think it gets the object's object based on the data that you give it, or if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. But we don't want to create a new item if it doesn't exist in this case. We just want to get. But of course, it might not work. So we want to put this inside of a try block. And the error that we want to accept is item dot does not exist. Every uh, model automatically has an error called does not exist that is defined inside of it. Um, so this error here is item that does not exist. And so what we can do is in that case, we'll just say ITM is none. So once again, it'll try to get the item from the database, which should work if it's a valid item ID. But if it's an invalid item ID, then we'll get an item that does not exist error. And in that case, we just want to set item equal to none. Pretty simple. Uh, basically, in this case, it'll make ITM none instead of giving an error if the item doesn't exist. Now, if we refresh this, you'll notice that it works, but we have an empty page. There's no title or description, and the title is missing the name of our particular item. It just says dash programming database. So now that we've gotten the error to go away, we want the page to actually, you know, tell us that we got an error. So we can use an if statement for this. To create an if statement in a template, you use uh, curly brace percent sign because this is an action that we want to take. We're going to use the word if, and uh, we can basically, this is really just the same as in Python. There's not so much to explain, but we could just say if item which will use Python's truthiness test, or we could just be specific and say if item is not equal to none. And then we need to close the if statement, so we need an end if, just like that. I'll tab all of this over by one just so it looks nice, but we have this if statement that says if item is not equal to none, then it will display all of this information, and then we have an end if. Now you're not gonna notice a difference here because it was already not showing the information. Since item was none, calling item.name would just make nothing happen. Uh, but in this case, it's actually just not rendering these elements at all. Before it was rendering the elements with no text inside of them. Not that it really makes a difference. But what we can do is we can specify an else. We can say if the condition is false and item is in fact none, we could do something different. So within the if statement, but outside of the end if, so between the if and the end if, we can supply an else. And inside of our else block, we can just say invalid item ID and refresh. You'll see we get our message, invalid item ID, and I'll stick a period in there. Um, so as you can see, we're checking to see if item is not equal to none, aka if it's a valid item. And if it is, we show the name and the description. Otherwise, we're going to say invalid item ID, and then we have our end if that ends this block. It works the exact same as in Python, so there's not much to explain. And you can also have elif blocks. So if I wanted in between this if and else, if I could add an elif, I could add multiple elifs. It's the exact same as in Python. But just to show you, uh, if I go back and I pick one that is valid, like Java, it will still show me all of the information. But if I pick one that's invalid, it will tell me invalid item ID. 
Let's just quickly fix the title also because uh, you'll notice that the title has the dash. And in this case, instead of saying a dash, we'll just have it say um, invalid item. So uh, we'll, we'll take this out, we'll cut it out, and we're going to say if item is not equal to none, then we want to display the title just like that. Otherwise, uh, we just want the title to say invalid item and then programming database. And then, of course, we need our end if. Very, very similar to regular Python. Basically, if the item does exist, we want to put its name in the title. Otherwise, we want to say invalid item. And if I refresh, you'll notice that it now says invalid item. So that's basically it. Just to do a quick recap, uh, we basically try to get the item from the database, but if that fails, uh, then we just set it equal to none. And then we create the context variable item where the value is ITM. So again, ITM will either be an item from the database or it'll just be none if the item doesn't exist. Then to deal with that correctly, we go to the item template and we handle basically if the item is not none, so if the item does exist, we put its name and description. Otherwise, if the item doesn't exist, we put a message in valid item ID. And we do the same thing to handle in the uh, header, or in the title, rather. Um, so basically, you can now go somewhere with an invalid item, uh, and it'll just say invalid item ID, and it'll say invalid item in the header. And of course, the back button still works, takes you back to the home page. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at template inheritance. And uh, template inheritance will basically allow us to have uh, like a header for our website. So like programming database is the title. And then um, each page can inherit from this like base. And each page will have that header automatically added to it. That'll make more sense in the next video when we talk about it. Uh, so make sure to continue on. But of course, subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, like if you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.